The financial meltdown of 1997 saw Thailand, Indonesia and South Korea turning to the IMF for financial bailouts to restore stability to their financial systems and calm market sentiments. But the drastic reforms, steep interest rate hikes and budget cuts had the effects of choking off economic growth, bankrupting companies and causing massive unemployment. Malaysia, under the premiership of Dr. Mahathir Mohamad, then rejected the IMF's intervention and chose an unorthodox policy to save the country's economy from falling deeper into the abyss. He pegged the ringgit at 3.8 to the dollar and imposed capital control measures to shield the currency from speculative pressures. That helped calm pressures and trigger an economic rebound. The IMF demands that if we borrow from them, they take control over our economy. And that we can afford because we are in the process of uh, affirmative action to level off the, uh, the growth of the different communities in this country. So if we leave it to the IMF, they would not care about the polit political effect of their management. Secondly, if they take over control of the economy of this country uh, and they focus entirely on the loans, uh, not on growth, then this country will regress. What Mahathir read very well is the psyche of people is so important to maintain confidence. When he saw the ringgit fell from 2.5 to the dollar to over 4, you know, 40, I think, at one point itself, and then businesses failing, he knew that it cannot go on itself because you don't know where it could fall further to or when it could recover. Uh, when the crisis hit, Dr. Mahadi saw it as an attack and needed to maintain the country's uh, private sector uh, from being uh, bought into by foreigners and therefore refused any assistance from the IMF because he felt that that would be giving up the country's economic sovereignty. But his economic solution was at odds with his deputy and finance minister at the time, Anwar Ibrahim. Anwar advocated a free market approach to the crisis and agreed with IMF's prescription of high interest rates and financial reforms to pull the country out of its economic doldrums. Differences between the two formidable political figures came to a head in September 1998. Dr. Mahathir brought in his trusted lieutenant, Daim Zainuddin, into the cabinet and sacked Anwar from all his positions in the party and the cabinet. He was eventually sentenced to six years imprisonment for corruption. I was actually planning to, to step down uh, by the by 1998, uh, I was planning to step down because then I would have been Prime Minister for 18 years, which is very long. But because of the crisis, because of the problem uh, that we find uh, within the, uh, the party and all that, uh, I have decided to stay on, that's all. Otherwise, I would have stepped down and of course, uh, somebody will take over for me, and at that time, it would be a no. We find that uh, uh, he was much more inclined to follow uh, World Bank advice, uh, IMF advice, and uh, there we have a difference there. He saw the crisis perhaps in very uns you know, black and white terms, that it is an attack on the country's economy, and uh, there are people inside his own party that is trying to capitalize on the confusion and instability that ensued in order to grab power. And he acted decisively to sack and eventually jail Anwar Ibrahim. After the dust has settled, Asia appears to be in a much healthier financial position. Asia's economies have since worked hard to build their reserves to act as a buffer against future shocks with or without IMF's assistance. I think Dr. Mahathir's uh, stance in trying to refuse IMF loans and also refuse the opportunity to structurally reform uh, failing industries and I would say a very uh, controlled economic sector, all of that opportunities were missed because by refusing external assistance and also imposing capital controls, he basically shielded Cocoon, the national economy, 
from, I would say, the vagaries of the international market. But at the same time, he allowed you know, all the bad practices and all the special relationships between politics and business to perpetuate. Korea benefited immensely from that. So did Indonesia. But in the case of Malaysia, we, we miss that part of the story. You know, countries where there is, uh, you know, the institutional reforms were in place. But in Malaysia, we have, we have a lot of financial scandals going on at this point in time. No, I don't agree at all. I think that currency trading, as I stated in Hong Kong, was immoral. Uh, that is the one, the thing that should be reformed. Currency trading, not our, not our economy or our finances. <laughs>